This is Fitness Blender's Lean Arms Workout. With this workout routine, we're going to be doing two rounds of eight different upper body exercises. We're going to be doing each exercise for one minute through, and you're going to need various weights of dumbbells to get this routine done. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our first round. Go ahead and grab your set of dumbbells. We're going to be starting off with a slow cross punch. Remember, we're going to be doing this for a minute, so you're probably not going to need a really heavy weight for this. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Bring those hands up to those shoulders. Nice and slow, one arm at a time. Press forward and across in front of your chest, and then slowly bring it back. It's a nice slow contraction with that bicep and tricep, as well as that shoulder, pressing that dumbbell straight out in front of you, across in front of that chest, and then slowly pulling it back. Just keep alternating back and forth, nice slow controlled motion, make sure that back stays nice and flat, a little bit of a bend in that knee, making sure you're just not completely locking it out. And we're just about halfway done, keep that motion under control. As those arms start getting tired, you're going to want to start speeding this motion up. Take your time, it's a nice slow press straight out in front and across that chest then slowly bring it back again. Your body's gonna to wanna to start making you do it really, really quickly so it can get that arm back to that rest position next to that shoulder. But take your time, it's a nice slow controlled motion. And we're almost done, just a few seconds left. And let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise, a bicep curl extension. Go ahead and get ready. And start it up. So you're doing a nice bicep curl, just bring that hand straight up to that shoulder, really nice tight squeeze, making sure you're keeping that elbow pinned back behind you by that rib cage. Then nice and slow at the top of that range of motion, you're gonna press that hand from in front of that shoulder to straight out in front of that shoulder so it's a full extension on that arm. Don't let that elbow completely lock out. You wanna always keep that elbow a little bit soft to that full extension. Then nice and slow, pull it right back into that shoulder, pin that elbow back to your side, then slowly let that hand drop back down from that curl position. Again, this is a really nice slow controlled motion. Don't let your body start speeding you up. You wanna make sure this is a very, very slow paced motion. Also check the rest of that body. Make sure that back stays nice and flat. As you extend those arms out in front of you, you're gonna to have to counterbalance that weight by leaning back a little bit. Make sure that lean comes all the way from your heels or from those hip joints and not just from that lower back. You don't wanna bend just from your lower back as that can actually injure or at least stress that lower back, especially when you're using heavier weights. All right, that was your last one. Go ahead and let it relax. We're gonna move on to the next exercise, the high-low extensions. Remember again, we're doing a minute. Go ahead and get ready. And start it up. So that left hand can go down at a 45 degree angle away from your body. That right hand can go up at a 45 degree angle above that shoulder, then slowly bring it back in right in front of that shoulder joint and then extend in the opposite direction. So that left hand can go up at a 45 degree angle above that shoulder, right hand's down at a 45 degree angle away from that shoulder. Just keep alternating back and forth, high position on one arm, low on the other, and then switch it, high position on that opposite arm, low on the other. Just keep alternating back and forth, nice slow controlled motion, again, squeeze it into the front of that chest, nice slow extension with those arms, nice slow contraction back in front of that chest, making sure that you're not letting your body speed that motion up to get back to that rest position. Be careful as those shoulders start getting tired. You don't want to let your body start tipping left or right. You want to keep that torso perfectly straight up and down. Don't let it lean. We're almost done. Keep that motion slow. And let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise. This is a ventral and lateral raise combination. Go ahead and get ready. And begin, starting with those dumbbells right in front of your body, you're gonna bring them straight up in front for that ventral raise. Pause right above that shoulder, then come straight down out from that shoulder to the outside of those hips for that lateral raise, and then bring it right back up again from that lateral raise, then drop it back down in front from that ventral raise. Just keep alternating back and forth. Ventral position is in front, laterals out to your sides. Just keep alternating back and forth, nice slow motion, like you're trying to draw a big M with those hands. And we're just about halfway through. Keep that motion going nice and controlled. Try to keep that elbow almost perfectly straight. You don't want to lock it out. Just a little bit of a bend in that elbow, but you want to keep that arm as straight as possible. 
Also, as you're coming up from that ventral position, you're gonna have to lean back a little bit to counterbalance that weight. Just like one of the exercises previous, you wanna make sure that you want to uh, hinge from your hips or your heels rather than from that lower back. And just five seconds left, we're almost done. And let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise, the external shoulder rotations. Go ahead and get ready. And start it up. Bring those hands directly up above that elbow, elbow directly out from that shoulder, and then nice and slow, drop those hands straight down so that forearm goes parallel to the ground, then slowly bring it right back up again so it's perpendicular to the ground. Just keep alternating back and forth, nice slow fluid motion. Try to make sure that you keep that elbow at the same height of that shoulder the entire time. You wanna make sure that that upper arm where that bicep and tricep is stays parallel to the ground the entire time you're doing this exercise. You're gonna get tired and those elbows are gonna to wanna to start drooping on you and start getting closer and closer to the ground, but keep concentrating, looking out of the corner of your eye to keep those elbows up really nice and high. Now this exercise not only focuses on that deltoid, the major muscle group in that shoulder, but it also focuses on those smaller rotator cuff muscles that hold that shoulder joint together. So you don't need to use a whole lot of weight for this one until you know that those shoulders can handle it. At the very least, you're just not gonna have very good form if you're using too much weight. At the most, you could actually possibly even injure that rotator cuff, uh, either stressing or tearing one of those little muscles in there. All right, go ahead and let it relax. Let's move on to the next exercise, the rhomboid squeezes. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. So bring those elbows up again, nice and high, just about shoulder height. You wanna squeeze those elbows back behind you in a little pulses, just a few inches, the very back of that range of motion. Pull that elbow forward so it's about lined up with that shoulder and then squeeze it back behind you again, a few inches, or as far back as you can possibly squeeze them. You want a nice tight squeeze like you're trying to pull those shoulder blades together, like you're trying to pinch a penny between those shoulder blades back behind your back. That's the kind of sensation you wanna feel with this one. Now this is a great exercise, not only for the top of that shoulder, that deltoid muscle, but also for, primarily for that rhomboid across that shoulder blade. This is what pulls those shoulder blades back. So not only is it gonna tone those muscles up really well, but it also pulls those muscles back, gets them a little bit tighter, so those shoulders will pull back and make you stand up a little bit taller. So this is a good one for posture as well. And we're almost done, just about 10 seconds left. Keep those pulses going, nice tight squeeze of the back. Keep watching those elbows, keeping them up nice and high. You want them at least shoulder height. Almost done, and let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise, the double cross extension. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Now this is very similar to the exercise we did at the beginning of this routine, the cross punch except you're using both arms at the same time rather than just one at a time. So with this one, you just wanna make sure you start with that hand right in front of that shoulder, then slowly press straight out and across your chest, alternating which hand comes on top every single time you press out. So one time you want that left arm on top, the next time you want that right arm on top. Just keep alternating back and forth, still getting that really nice tight squeeze. You should feel this quite a lot more in your chest compared to the uh, single arm. So you should feel a tight squeeze across the center line of that chest as well as uh, contracting muscles through those shoulders, those biceps, and a little bit into that tricep as well. Also keep in mind that because you're pressing your weight straight out in front of your body and you're using both arms at the same time, you're gonna have to use a little bit of counterbalance by leaning back a little bit. Remember, you wanna hinge only from your hip socket or from all the way down in your ankle. Never hinge from just that lower back. All right, we're almost done, just about five seconds left. Keep that motion going nice and slow under control and let it relax. All right, let's go move on to the next exercise. We're gonna be doing a plyometric push-up. We're doing these off of a wall to make it a little bit easier. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Now you can do these off of a wall with us, otherwise you can do them uh, off of your knees, a half push-up, or if you're strong enough, you can do a full push-up. Otherwise, just do how we're doing right here, leaning in towards a wall. You want those feet by about uh, two to four feet away from the wall. Drop forward, let your weight lean against the wall, and then pop yourself off the wall. Hover up on those heels for just a second, and then drop right back down to the wall. Nice slow uh, recoil with those arms, and then pop it right back out again, coming back away from that wall. Now we're about halfway through. Keep that motion going nice and smooth and clean. Make sure you're keeping a nice straight line from your shoulder all the way down to that ankle, just like you would if you are doing a full push-up. 
You don't want to let those hips droop or kick back out behind you. And we're almost done. You got 10 seconds left. Keep that motion going nice and strong. Make sure you're getting a really quick pop off of that wall and a slow recoil as you drop back towards it. And let it relax. All right, that was the end of round number one. Go ahead and take a short little break here. We're gonna start into round number two in just a second. All right, let's go and get started with round number two. We're gonna be starting back over with the slow cross punches. Go ahead and get ready. And start it up. One arm at a time, you're gonna start with those hands right in front of those shoulders. Slowly press your arm out and across in front of that chest, then slowly pull it back again. Remember, there's a nice, slow, controlled motion. You want a tight squeeze as you extend that arm out. Don't lock your elbow out completely. You want just a slight bend in that elbow, then slowly pull that arm back in. Just keep that motion going over and over again. And you're halfway right there. Just keep that motion going. Remember, as those arms get tired, they're going to want to start speeding up on you. They're going to want to push out and back in really quickly to get back to that rest position with that hand up above that elbow. Try to force yourself to move very slowly. Just so slow press out, slow contraction back in, and then switch over the other side. Just keep alternating back and forth. Slow motion. We're almost done. It's five seconds left. and let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise, the bicep curl extension. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Go ahead and start with those elbows tucked back down by your rib cage. Nice and slow, do that curl motion, bring that hand straight up to that shoulder, squeeze it in nice and tight without letting that elbow pull forward. Then slowly extend those arms straight in front of that shoulder. Go to a full extension, but don't completely extend that elbow. You want it just barely, barely bent, and then you want to nice and slow, draw that hand back into that shoulder, tuck that elbow back to that side, and slow let that hand drop back down to those thighs. And we're just about halfway done. Just keep that motion going nice and slow into control. Remind yourself that as you extend those arms out away from you, you're going to have to lean back to counterbalance that weight. Just make sure you're hinging from that hip or all the way down from that ankle, just make sure you don't hinge from that lower back. You wanna make sure that you're keeping that back nice and flat, only hinging from that hip or that ankle. We're almost done, just a few more seconds left. Keep that motion going nice and slow. We got five seconds left. Slowly draw those hands back in, drop them down from that curl, and let it relax. All right, let's go and move on to the next exercise, the high-low extensions. Go ahead and get ready. And start up. Remember, one arm goes up nice and high to 45, the other arm goes down at a 45. Draw them back into your chest, and then switch which one goes up and which one goes down. Just keep alternating back and forth. Go to almost a complete extension on that arm. Remember, you want to just keep a tiny, tiny little bit of a bend in that elbow. Don't lock it out completely. Then nice and slow, draw that hand back down in front of that shoulder, and slowly press it out again, just in that opposite position. Just keep that motion slow under control. Remember, the body's gonna wanna start speeding this motion up as those arms get tired. So force yourself to stay nice and slow. And we only have 10 seconds left. Keep that motion under control. Remember, keep that motion slow. Go to almost a full extension, slight bend in your elbow. Almost done. And let it relax. All right, let's go and move on to the next exercise, the ventral and lateral raise combination. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Start with those hands in front of those thighs. Slowly bring those hands up directly in front of that chest, right up over top of that shoulder. Then slowly drop those hands directly out to your side, down to the outside of that thigh and then back up again. Pause above your shoulder and then bring them down in front of your chest again, starting in that original position. Just keep that motion going back and forth, nice slow fluid motion, alternating back and forth between that ventral raise, the one that goes in front of your body, and that lateral raise out to the sides. Just a nice slow controlled motion. Again, try to control that speed. Your body's gonna wanna start making you speed up, especially as you drop back down. 
Make sure you're keeping it under control, nice slow drop as well as a nice slow raise. Also, when you bring that hand up in front of that chest, remember again, you're gonna have to counterbalance that weight, so make sure you're hinging from that hip or from all the way down to that ankle. And we're almost done. We have about five seconds left. Keep that motion going. We have enough for one more. Drop it back down and let it relax. All right, let's go and move on to the next exercise, the external shoulder rotation. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Remember, you don't need a whole lot of weight for this one. Going to bring that elbow up to shoulder height. You want it straight across from elbow to elbow, nice and slow. Drop those hands down to parallel to the ground so that forearm is parallel to the ground. Then bring those hands back up so that forearm is perpendicular to ground. Just alternate back and forth, nice, slow, fluid motion. Dropping it down parallel, then back up perpendicular. Just keep it going. We're three quarters of the way done, just about 15 seconds left. Keep those elbows up nice and high. They're gonna to wanna to start drooping on you. Make sure they're at least shoulder height. Just keep that motion going. We're almost there. Five seconds left. And let it relax. All right, let's go and move on to the next exercise, the rhomboid squeeze. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Again, bring those elbows up to shoulder height. You're gonna squeeze them back behind you, short pulses the very back of that range of motion from at least shoulder, uh, elbow straight across from elbow to back behind that back. Nice, tight squeeze every single time, trying to pull those shoulder blades back together. Like I said before, like you're trying to pinch a penny between those shoulder blades. You wanna get a really nice, tight squeeze every single time. The same time as keeping those elbows up really nice and high and that forearm perpendicular to the ground. And that's halfway right there. Just keep that motion going. Really nice tight squeeze every single pulse. You wanna make sure those rhomboids are really nice and tired by the time you're done. Ten seconds left. Nice tight squeeze. Just keep that motion going. Elbows up nice and high. Almost done and let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise, the double cross extension. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Remember, this is exactly like that single arm cross, but this time you're doing it with both arms at the same time. Just make sure that you're alternating which hand goes over top every single time. So one time you want the left hand over top, the next time you want the right hand over top. Make sure that you're actually hinging from that hip or that ankle. When you extend those arms out, you're gonna to have to counterbalance and lean back. You wanna make sure that you're not leaning from that lower back, only from those hips or that ankle. Nice, slow, fluid motion. Slowly squeeze it out. Get to almost a full extension. You wanna keep that elbow just slightly bent, and then nice and slow, pull it right back into that rest position with those hands right in front of that shoulder. Just keep that motion going nice and slow under control. And we are almost done. We got five seconds left. One more repetition. And let it relax. All right, let's go move to the next exercise, the plyometric push-ups. Go ahead and get ready. And begin. Now remember, you can do these off of a wall if you want to, just like we're doing here. Or if you want to make it harder, you can drop down and do it off of your knees for a half push-up or off those toes for a full regular push-up. Now the idea with this one is to pop off that wall or off that floor as hard as you possibly can, giving 100% effort, and then nice and slow, drop it back down, recoil, slowing yourself down as best you can, dropping all the way back down to that full push-up, and then shoving off that wall or that floor again as hard as you can, trying to get that bounce again. Just keep that motion going, nice slow controlled motion, try to get that really nice slow recoil every single time you come back down against that wall or that floor, 
and make sure you're keeping that nice straight line from that shoulder all the way down into that ankle, making sure those hips don't droop underneath you or kick out back behind you. And we're almost done, just about five seconds left. And let it relax. All right, good job. This workout is complete. You just finished Fitness Blender's Lean Arms Workout.